In this demo, we will see how to identify sensitive data in text and how to anonymize it. First, you need to install these two modules, Procedure Analyzer, which will be used to identify sensitive data, and Procedure Anonymizer, which we'll use for the anonymization part. We also need to download this spicy language model. I have already installed them, so I won't be running this cell again. Next, we need to do some imports. We need to import Analyzer Engine from Procedure Analyzer and Anonymizer Engine from Procedure Anonymizer. Now we can start by identifying our sensitive data. First, we need an input text. So here we have this example text. His name is Mr. Bill Jones and his phone number is, his email address and his ID. As we can see, it contains sensitive information, such as the person's name, the phone number and the email address. In order to detect this sensitive information, we use the analyzer engine. So we create an analyzer engine instance, then we call the method analyze. It takes as parameter the text that we want to analyze, the entities that we want to identify, so let's say we want to detect the phone number, the person and the email and we also need to specify the language which is English in this case. This method returns a list and if we print the results, we get the list of entities that have been identified. So the first entity that has been identified is email address. It's located between the indices 85 and 101 in the string. The second entity is person and the third entity is phone number. And using the start and end index, we can actually print the strings that have been identified as sensitive information. So as we can see, we have the email, we have the full name that has been identified as the entity person and we have the phone number. Alright, so now how do we know which entities are supported here? So far we have identified person, phone number and email address. But does Presidio support other entities like credit card number or social security number? We can actually find this information in the documentation. Here under general, supported entities, we can find the list of supported entities. For example, we have credit card, which corresponds to a number between 12 and 19 digits. We also have crypto wallet number. We have date time, email address, which we have used, location, person, phone number, etc. Now, let's say we want to be able to detect an entity that's not supported by default. For example, in our input text, we have this identifier that has six digits and we want to detect it as sensitive information. To do that, we can create a custom pattern recognizer. First, we need to import pattern and pattern recognizer. Then we define our pattern, we give it a name and we can define it with this regular expression that corresponds to six numbers. Once we have our pattern, we can create a pattern recognizer, which will detect strings that match our pattern and identify them under the entity name ID. Now we can add this new pattern recognizer to our existing analyzer. Then we can call the analyze method again and add our new entity to the list. If we print the results, we can see that ID has been detected between these indices. And if we print the actual entities, we can see the four entities. Alright, now let's move on to the anonymization part. So after identifying the sensitive data in our text, the next step is to anonymize this data. For this, we use Anonymizer Engine. First, we create an instance that we call Anonymizer. Then we call the Anonymize method. 
It takes as input our initial text that we want to anonymize and analyzer results that we got here with the method analyzer.analyze. And if we print the results, we get this anonymized text. As we can see, the sensitive data has been replaced with the name of each entity. His name is Mr. Person and his phone number is phone number, his email address is email address and his ID is ID. Now let's say instead of entity names, we want to replace our sensitive data with something else. We can do that by adding another argument to anonymize method. So let's try that. Let's call anonymizer.anonymize again. So we give it the text that we want to anonymize, the analyzer results as we did previously, and this time we add this third argument, operators. Operators is defined as a dictionary with the keys corresponding to the names of our entities and the value is this operator config object that describes how we want to anonymize that entity. For example, for phone number, we say that we want to replace it with a mask of this asterisk character with length 12, which means every phone number will be replaced by 12 asterisk. And for default entity, which means every other entity, we want to replace it with a new value, which is this string, anonymized. So let's run our code and see the results. And here we have the anonymized text. His name is Mr. Anonymized. His phone number is masked with the asterisk mask. His email address is anonymized and his ID is anonymized. So we got our results as expected.